Hey guys, what's up? It's Audrey. Ow. In this video, I'm gonna go over a couple techniques I tend to use a lot with my personal animations and motion designs, primarily using After Effects and a little bit of Procreate Dreams. Now I won't be covering every little bit of this like design and motion design, because uh, there's a lot of little elements here, but you can kind of use your imagination. They're primarily gonna be a lot of just like your basic position, rotation, and like scale keyframes. So promise you won't miss much. Also, newsflash, I did get a new sweater vest and it matches my pillow. We're literally the same. I hope you like it, but not as much as I hope you like this video. So just to kind of go over the design in general real quick. Uh, so I decided to do a little self-portrait, um, primarily drawing this in Procreate and just using a reference that I took of myself the other day. But yeah, I just thought it'd be a fun uh, kind of little personal branded kind of animation, um, have a bit of my like illustration Easter eggs in there and patterns and um, other graphic elements that I tend to use a lot. And then I worked through a 1080 by 1350 like canvas size, but also made a 1080 by 1080 grid kind of reference for the center, uh, just to kind of keep in mind crops for when I post this on Instagram. And then I imported everything into an After Effects file with that same size, named my layers, and organized all my pre-comps. And then for the posterized time effect, this one's super easy, probably the easiest one, uh, where I'm just gonna go to layer, new, Add a new adjustment layer in my effects panel, go to posterize time and just add that in. And usually what I do is about like 12 to 15 uh, frames per second. Um, just really kind of depends um, on like the choppiness that I'm going for. And then definitely uh, make sure to consider like where this layer is gonna live um, among all of your layers where I don't want this over my, um, my self portrait here because this already has a low frame rate. And so I don't wanna make that even more choppy. Um, so just noting that wherever that adjustment layer is, it's going to affect everything underneath it. And we won't be able to see this effect really take place until we have some stuff animating, um, but we'll be able to see that here in a second. Second one is the wiggle expression. Uh, this one's also super easy, so I'm going to apply that to both the green balloon dog here and this little spike ball that I have. Um, and so I want to affect both the position and a little bit of the rotation uh, keyframes or variables for both of these. So if I hit R and then shift P, it'll bring up both uh, rotation and position. Um, I'm just gonna do option click on the uh, stopwatch timer thing here and then type in wiggle, enter, and then I think the variables I kind of use are pretty low. So I might try something like three and three. It's definitely moving around too much. Um, so this one is definitely kind of a trial and error to your liking kind of thing. That's feeling pretty good. And I'm just gonna copy this expression. Option click on the rotation variable here and then paste that same wiggle expression in there just so I can get the same level of movement with that rotation there. And I'll just apply this to the red spike ball too. And then here you should be able to kind of tell uh, that the posterized time effect is taking place. So if I turn that off, um, it definitely feels smoother, a little more linear, which is fine. You know, this can work, but I just, I love texture. And I think the posterized time effect for me is kind of that like other layer of texture, but within movement, if that makes sense. So feels a little more uh, stop motion-y, which I like. So if you look closely, um, the wiggle expression here doesn't loop. So at the end of this five seconds here, it's gonna kind of jump cut just a little bit. Um, so it doesn't really make for seamless loops or anything. Um, and with expressions, it can definitely be a bit more difficult. But if you Google um, like wiggle loop expression, the first thing that pops up is aereference.com. And the first thing here on the site is an expression to help with that. And so all you need to do is copy this expression and then in After Effects, just edit these variables in red here. So if I were to do that here real quick, I will paste over this wiggle expression. And obviously the spike ball is taking the uh, <laughs> the variables from the website here. Um, so I'm just gonna turn this down, make the amplitude two and the seconds to loop. I've got five in my comp here and I think that's all I need to edit. Um, but yeah, this is the similar um, kind of frequency that I had going on here, but you'll notice at the end of the composition, it loops perfectly. Now this one's definitely a tried and true. I use this almost every time I do any bit of animation or motion design to layer on top, um, is doing a looping grain or film texture 
kind of thing. So I have three here that I use quite a bit um, and you really only need a few, um, especially if they are large in size and you're able to kind of move the position um, and scale of them around. So I'm gonna select these and make a new comp from those. Now I'm just gonna make this a one second kind of composition, hit okay. And then we get all of these in their own layers here. And I think usually I'll select these um, and give it about two frames. Shift control D to, uh, to kind of split these up. And then I'll just start moving these around and noting too that the textures are in their own like comp size, which I believe is pretty big. Um, so again, our composition for the main animation is 1080 by 1350. So it's really only gonna take up a small chunk of this, but really good to have um, high res textures. So to make it a little more easier on myself, I'm gonna make this 1080 by 1350, just so we know where the texture is going to land exactly. So we've got three here, pretty easy. And then I'm just gonna select these, Control D to duplicate, move them to the bottom, scoot them over. And then with each of these textures, I'm just gonna move each of these around just a little bit so that every frame is different. And you can thank Ben Marriott for this uh, technique. I learned this a long time ago when I was first learning motion design and I use it all the freaking time now. And then you can also, for some more variety, uh, rotate these around, just make sure they all look different. And here's our last three here. Got a good amount of variety here in this texture. So a pre-comp is called 27, which we're just gonna rename that as film loop. And then there's a little bit of a process uh, with getting Getting this one second comp to loop. Um, but we'll go through that now. By default, it'll it'll center this, um, and then and then we'll want to right click on this comp, go to time, enable time remapping. I'm gonna go to this very last keyframe here, and then we're gonna move back the playhead by one. Add a keyframe there. Delete this last one, and then I'm gonna extend this all the way out to the end of our comp. So then obviously it stops after that keyframe, and so we'll want to do an option click on the time remap stopwatch here and type in loop out. And you don't have to put in any variables for that, and it should just loop on its own. And obviously also if two keyframes for each of these textures is too fast, you can edit that in your main texture loop comp here, give it a bit more uh, length. And here's what that looks like when I made everything four frames instead of two. But then having the visibility um, to kind of set a different blending mode, I'll usually do like screen or something. Um, this will kind of bring out all the white bits of that texture. Um, and then I also sometimes will use um, kind of a duplicate texture and move it um, and then use, I think, difference. So then it'll kind of make that white texture black instead. Um, so I might use this because the majority of my design here is white and there's still a little bit that shows up on the, uh, on the black bits too. If you like this video so far, consider leaving a like and subscribe all the YouTube-y things. Kind of a self plug, cause you know, it's YouTube. <laughs> but feel free to check out my store. I have a lot of free assets and useful things, hopefully. Uh, templates, that kind of thing. So hopefully it makes your life easier. Thanks again for watching this video um, in general, and I hope you like the rest of it. <laughs> For turbulent displays, this one's super easy. Um, you can kind of use this on an adjustment layer or on a layer itself, um, so it doesn't affect other layers below it. But I'm going to have my uh, Havy, my last name type here um, selected, and then under my effects and presets, turbulent displays, double click that. And then by default, it's gonna give it this really wonky turbulent displacement effect. Um, but we're gonna adjust the variables here quite a bit. So I usually go to size uh, first, where I always use two, um, because that'll just give some really micro kind of bumps here. And then with the amount, this will kind of uh, determine like how wavy and kind of jittery you want your edges. But I use this sometimes on illustrations and stuff just to give it a little more um, of like a organic hand-drawn kind of effect. And then you can obviously make that move as well if you wanted, but I'll play around with that. Um, so this one, super easy. Just gotta kind of play around with the, uh, the variables that you want here. So if I were to do it on my illustration here, for example, I'll just copy and paste that uh, effect on here. And you can't really tell um, a bunch uh, of a difference here, but once you start kind of cranking up the uh, the amount, 
uh, you start to see some of that like jitteriness, uh, which can be really cool for you know a certain look that you're going for. Um, you don't have to rely too much on your illustration itself for that. So with the displacement map, um, I use these quite a bit, um, but really kind of depends on the need for it. Um, so like if there's something that's kind of like a graphic or a background or something, um, I'll tend to use these quite a bit. Um, so for the red checkers, which is what I'm gonna I'm gonna use for this, so I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer, and then I'm gonna add the displacement map effect to that, and then I'm gonna go back to my project here and find that film loop texture. But since we already did the time remapping thing, I'm actually just gonna copy and paste it from the main comp here, so we don't have to do that all over again. And then if you kind of think about displacement maps as like a sandwich where you have the bun up top here, which is like the adjustment layer with that effect. And then you have whatever artwork you want displaced in the middle. And then at the bottom you have whatever kind of texture or video or anything like that you want to be like the displacement. So in that adjustment layer, we're gonna select the film loop texture. And then under source, we're gonna do effects and masks. And then under these channels, I usually do luminance, I think. And I'll just kind of like mess around with some of these variables. And then if I turn off the loop texture here, I can kind of see a little bit um so with those chunks of like white and black uh which as you know with like alpha channels and masking and stuff those are kind of like the main values for you know masking stuff out and so you can kind of see here that it's displacing the checkers a little bit with that green so it's super subtle um it doesn't have to be anything crazy um but i have done this exact uh technique with like an acid uh video um and just kind of messing around with like the black and white values of that um, you can get some really cool effects with that. And then in our main comp, it will move that composition or that pre-comp around a little bit because of that displacement. So we'll just kind of want to remember where that was. Um, I have a reference photo underneath for instances like this, and then I can just kind of shimmy over that artwork a little bit. And for this next one, uh, with the grainy kind of gradient element, um, it's similar to the looping texture technique, uh, but this one I'm treating more as like a graphic kind of element rather than just like a texture, if that makes sense. So we're really just gonna kind of treat it similar to a looping texture. Um, so I've got three different PNGs here um, of just a noisy brush kind of stroke that I made in Photoshop three different times. Make a new comp from this selection, do one second again. But yeah, I just did this three separate times in Photoshop on top of each other, um, but that alone will be enough variation for this. Um, so when the grain, you know, kind of flips through, it looks like it's moving, which is super fun. So I'll cut these to four frames and move them like so. And even just this alone, you can kind of get the idea. Then I'll duplicate these. Luckily it's just uh, duplicating it that one time and then I'll probably flip these so that we get a little more variation out of that grain. And this is kind of the gradient grain noisy thing kind of kind of thing <laughs> that we're that we're going for. And so what I mean by calling it a gradient, um, so I'm gonna use this on the name my name Audrey here and I'm gonna go into that that pre-comp here. So if I bring this texture in, you won't be able to really see it much. Um, so I'm gonna add a fill effect to that and then I can make it whatever color I want, similar to like a color overlay effect in Photoshop. So if I were to make this like gray or something, maybe condense it down. And then using the track mat tool down here, I can pick whip that to my name here and then make sure that my name is still toggled on so, so it's not um, transparent. And I can kind of move this around however I want, scale it down a little bit, and then we'll do the same uh, time remapping thing that we talked about earlier. And there we go. So you can see um, just kind of that like gradient effect, um, but it had, it's its own bit of texture in itself too. So the frame by frame animation one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I really just edited the eyes and this little pinky finger here in Procreate Dreams. But ultimately I did three different drawings or three different keyframes for the eyes and then three different ones for the pinky and then literally reversed those so that you know when it closed it came back up the same way and then similar for the pinky finger as well so really in total six frames of unique animations or unique drawings uh, to make that animation um, super simple. Um, frame by frame is definitely a time consuming kind of medium for animation, obviously. Um, and I wanted to do more like the hair 
and maybe have my foot tapping and stuff, but I think with how I did it in Procreate, um, I kind of just didn't really think about uh, making it super friendly for Procreate Dreams uh, to do that. So I just kept it super simple. And I think with, with all the other bits of animation going on in this composition, I think keeping it simple, but still giving it a little bit of life um, works out in the end. And then for this final effect, I've been using this somewhat recently, but I think it's just super cool, um, is the transform position like slash VHS effect kind of thing. So what I'm going to do for that is make a layer or an adjustment layer on top of everything here. I'll just call this VHS. I'll know what that means. And then under the effects and presets panel, adding in the transform effect should be under the distort area. And then all I'm going to do is option click on that stopwatch under the position variable here. And I'm just gonna give it something, or give it a wiggle expression, sorry. Back to the wiggle <laughs> expression here. And we're just gonna add something simple like one and three, or sorry, three and one. And then obviously you can adjust this to your liking as well, but you can kind of get a gist that it moves the entire composition over. I might tweak that down to maybe like one and one and see if that's a little more subtle. Two and one, knock my resolution down just a little bit so my computer's not screwed. Screaming. But you can kind of see here, um, it just moves everything around just a little bit. And you can obviously put this under like the texture layer or something. So the texture is kind of like on its own, however you see fit with that. But I think it's a fun little way to kind of give it that, um, that old VHS tape kind of look. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Let me know what you think of the techniques that I use all the time. <laughs> Hopefully you find any of these techniques helpful with your own stuff. And yeah, let me know what you think of the design overall and hopefully this was helpful. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.